This is problem number two on the practice problems for quest number three. Simplify each expression eliminating any negative exponents. Part A, 2A to the fifth minus 2A to the fifth. So the thing in the parentheses has a five on the outside. That five is going to come in and hit both of the pieces inside. So that two is going to have a fifth on it, and so is the A. That's really important that the two gets the fifth power as well as the A. And then I'll copy this thing over here. Notice that this five doesn't come over here to the two. There's no parentheses. So we just copy two A to the fifth. And then two to the fifth is 32. A to the fifth minus two A to the fifth. And then these are like terms. 32 of some things minus two of the same things gives me 30 of those things. So 30A to the fifth is our final answer. Part B, 3x cubed squared. So first thing we'll do is again bring that squared inside to both the terms. So it's 3 squared times x cubed squared. 3 squared is 9. And then what do we do with powers when they're next to each other like this? Do we add them or multiply? We multiply. So this is 9x to the 6th. Part C. z squared to the negative 3. So first thing I'm going to do is recognize that I can multiply those powers just like we did before. So I get z to the negative 6 by just multiplying. And then this exercise says don't leave any ne negative exponents. So all we have to do is translate a negative 6 power. What does it mean? It means 1 over. And then we make it a positive 6. So 1 over z to the 6th is our final answer. Part D, b to the 5th times b to the 8th. So what's the basic idea here? Keep the base, add the exponents b to the 13, and we're done. Part E, three over x to the negative three. So if you have a fraction raised to a negative power, the easiest way to handle it is to flip over the fraction and make it a positive power. So again, a fraction raised to a negative exponent, flip the fraction, make it a positive exponent. There are other ways to do this. For example, you could say, okay, it's a 1 over and then copy everything, but now it's a positive 3, and that's fine, and you can get from there to the final answer, but it's a complex fraction, and I think it's easier to deal with this shortcut that we've just done here. And then we're going to cube top and bottom, x cubed over 3 cubed x cubed is fine, 3 cubed is 27. Part F, 4 x to the 6th, y to the 8th, the whole thing raised to the 3 halves. So first that 3 halves is going to come in and hit every piece, 4 to the 3 halves, x to the 6th, to the 3 halves, y to the 8th, to the 3 halves. Okay, it turns out that handling the variable parts I think is even easier than the number part. So let's pause on the 4 for a moment. And what do we do with powers when they're right next to each other like this? We multiply them. So we're doing 6 times 3 halves. I'll do it up here. 6 times 3 halves. You're welcome to do 18 over 2 and then get 9. I think a good habit is to reduce whenever you can. So we get 3 times 3, still 9. So this is x to the ninth. Same idea with the y. We'll do it up here. 8 times 3 halves. Multiply those powers. Cancel the 8 and the 2 and make 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So this is y to the 12th. And then what does 4 to the 3 halves mean? Well, the calculator can handle it, but let's make sure we can too without the calculator. So if you see a fraction power, it means there's a root. What piece goes where? Part on the top stays on the top. That 3 means cube the whole thing. The 2 is the index of the root. It goes right there. I'll put parentheses in. It's also perfectly fine to not put the 3 there, but rather put it inside. Either way, we'll get the same thing. But I like putting the power outside. So almost done here. 
square root of 4 is 2. It's still being cubed. x9, y12. And then our final answer, 2 cubed is 8. x to the 9, y to the 12th. Part G, negative 2n squared, 64n to the 9th to the 2 thirds. So we're going to have to handle the parentheses first. That 2 thirds is going to come in to everything inside. So that's 64 to the 2 thirds times n to the 9th to the 2 thirds. Still copying these pieces here, 2n squared. And now we'll deal with the powers. So 64 to the 2 thirds, we know again that's going to be a radical. 64 is here, the 2 is the power, the 3 is the index. So it looks like that. And maybe here it makes more sense as to why I always like to put the power on the outside, because instead of putting it there, you're welcome to put it here, but then you have to do 64 squared, which is tough without a calculator. Whereas here, the squared is going to happen after the number gets smaller. That 64 is going to get smaller when we do the cube root. Okay, and then n to the ninth to the two thirds, we multiply those, same as before. Uh, we'll just put the answer here. So when we multiply this, we get six. So n to the sixth is there. Let's copy some stuff again, and then we'll mush things together at the end. Negative two n squared. Cube root of 64 is four. Four squared is 16. So all told, that whole thing becomes 16. Say it again, cube root of 64 is 4, then 4 squared is 16. And then finally, mush together the things that belong. The 2 and the 16 makes 32, negative sign in front. n squared times n to the 6th, what do we do with those powers? Add them. Keep the base, add the powers. Part h, x to the 10th over 4, the whole thing to the negative 1 half power. Lots of ways to approach this one. For me, if I see a fraction raised to a negative exponent, immediately I flip over the fraction and make it a positive exponent. It's always what I do. Okay, and then uh, we can take that one half and bring it into both the top and the bottom. So the four gets hit with the one half. X to the tenth also gets hit with the one half. 4 to the 1 half, what does it mean? Well, it's got some radical in it. The 1 goes as the power. 2 goes as the index. You didn't need to write either the 1 or the 2 because 1 half power just means square root. But I'll put them both in. What do we do with the powers here down on the bottom? 10 and 1 half get multiplied and make 5. Last piece, square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the first is still 2. 2x to the fifth is our answer. Part i, y to the two fifths times five fourths. So we know again we're supposed to multiply those powers together. I'll put it here, two fifths times five fourths. It's okay to do 10 over 20 and then reduce, but I think a good habit is to cross off first. Fives cancel, two becomes one, four becomes two. However you slice it, you'll get one half when you're done. But I always encourage folks to cancel before they multiply. So what does that mean? It means that our answer is y to the one half, or square root of y. Part J, 16C to the negative 4 over C to the negative 8. So we see negative exponents, which means in motion. So I've got my fraction here. C to the negative 4 is currently upstairs. It moves downstairs and becomes positive 4. So negative 4 upstairs becomes positive 4 downstairs. Then on the bottom was C to the negative 8. It moves. It was in the bottom. It moves to the top and becomes positive 8. So a negative 8 power on the bottom is the same as a positive 8 power upstairs. Now where do we move the 16? Well, we don't. 16 has no power on it at all. It has no reason to move. It was upstairs to start. It's going to be upstairs at the end. 
If it had started in the bottom, it would stay in the bottom. Only move the things that are physically attached to those negative exponents. Okay, so this is equal to 16, and then what do we do with powers when there's division like this? We subtract them. So subtract 8 minus 4 gives us 4. 16c to the 4th is our answer. Our k, rs cubed times 2r to the 4th, s to the negative 5th. First, we'll bring that cubed into both of the pieces, so it's r cubed, s cubed. And then those parentheses aren't necessary. I'll just put a dot for multiplication and copy everything here. Okay, and then we'll bring the number in the front, so the 2 comes up here. We'll group the r's together. What do we do with those powers? We add them, 3 and 4 is 7. What do we do with these powers here? Well, we add those as well. 3 and negative 5 is negative 2, which is fine, but the directions again said you're not allowed to have any um, negative exponents. So s to the negative 2, it's currently upstairs, it moves downstairs and becomes s to the positive 2. And I just realized that I made a mistake on part h, so let's fix that. Right here, we had x to the 10th to the 1 half, and I said correctly that we're supposed to multiply those things. Somehow I incorrectly just brought the x to the 5th upstairs, whereas you can see it is downstairs. So let's fix that here. So it is that square root. I move this whole thing up a little bit. So it was the square root of 4 to the 1st, and then it's divided by x to the 5th. Square root of 4 is still 2 x to the fifth is now correctly on the bottom. You probably caught that way before I did.